Rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending, presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Wyoming to the rescue, Jerem. Or a game against Wyoming for BYU football. BYU football fans are hoping that a game against Wyoming will help solve some of the woes that were presented against Oregon at Autzen Stadium. So, Jerem, as we look deeper into this, what does BYU football have to do against the Cowboys to help you and the rest of the fan base, maybe, move on from the loss against Oregon. Certainly a big win would help. Uh, the line is, what, 22 and a half as of Monday. Haven't looked it up since. Maybe it's slid a little bit. But a big win would be nice. Even bigger than that would be nice. Wyoming is a, a, a good team. Will they challenge BYU at home? In certain areas, I think so. But I think Wyoming's running into a buzzsaw here. This is a, an agitated BYU football team. Yep. As evidenced by some of the comments this week, they want to move on from this game. They want to perform better. They know they're better. Let's listen to a couple of sound bites to illustrate this, starting with Kalani Satake. Whenever you, you're kind of, you know, being questioned a little bit as a team, as a program, you have, you have one choice. So I've asked these guys to be humble and be hungry. Now you got no choice but to be humble and to learn. And now you got no choice but to get hungry and, and get after this next game. I wish the game was tomorrow. That was Monday. Okay. That was Monday. A little bit of agitation. Hey, let's go. Uh, Aaron Roderick, you just heard him. Let's play a more extended soundbite on the important of, uh, importance of establishing the run game because obviously BYU has not performed well in the last two games on the ground. Here's A-Rod. They're, they're really good run defense. There's always one more person in the box than you can block. Um, they're very good at what they do. It'll be a challenge, but um, it's the same offensive line and basically the same team that ran the heck out of the ball last year. Yep. Not, not concerned about it. Concerned. Uh, we'll fix it. Awesome. Looking back at the Oregon, was there something particular they did? No, we got, well, we got down by three scores, so we, could, we didn't really try to run. You were trying to throw the ball. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even try to run. We were too far down. You had to throw to catch up. Mm -hmm. So running the ball, you, we could have we spent the whole day trying to figure out how to run the ball if you don't, wanna, if you don't care about winning. BYU certainly cares about winning, and that's why the Cougars had to pass a lot. Um, passing a lot is sometimes is a sign that you were behind. Sometimes it's a sign that that secondary stinks and you're throwing the ball down the field. But, yes, a big win where BYU establishes the run, and hopefully it's pretty clean everywhere else. Would love to see some Jake Oldroyd field yep. goals yes, go through. Yes, please. Assuming he's the kicker. Better special teams overall. Ryan Rico has got to play better. Uh, right now he's not the best player on the team like he was the previous two years. <laughs> As I've talked about, Zach Wilson was two years ago, don't, no doubt. But, uh, yeah, I, I expect, and I think you do too, it, for BYU to respond really well to a, a terrible performance last week, I think they're going to come out and just blow Wyoming out. Yes, let's qualify what that dominant, yes. big blowout victory At would look like. At least to cover. Okay. At least. BYU is a 21 or 22 point favorite, depending on which line you're looking at. Okay, three plus, three plus touchdowns. Scores. Yes, that's why I say 17, by the way. Because 17 is three scores. Wyoming averages about 24 points a game. So That's not a ton. If BYU's defense does give up 24 and they cover, we're looking at mid-40s. Like, and to me, that's kind of where I, I have pinpointed what BYU's offense needs to do. I love it. Give me 40-plus, probably 45 to 48 points against Wyoming. It's and very specific the range. The Cougars have sense. done this a lot against Wyoming, for what it's worth. Granted, <laughs> it's been a while. Often they've gone 50-plus in the last 20 years. Uh, just get to 45, at least, if, if you're BYU. So that's a qualify. And how you do it, the run game for BYU needs to be established. Granted, Wyoming's rush defense through four games has been pretty good. Yeah. Only 126 yards on the ground given up per, per team. Including per Air average. Force, who including was Air depleted, yes. but still, that's what Air Force does, right? Yeah, Air Force was missing six starters, had 37 different players sick and missing practice at some point during the week leading up to the Wyoming game. But still, like you got to show up against a very, very disciplined option offense in Air Force, and you got to go to work. So only 126 a game is interesting. Like how does BYU's rushing attack, as we just heard Aaron Roderick said, look, their, their rush defense is good. we got to figure this thing out. So maybe this is a little bit more of a maybe challenge. Maybe BYU has to throw it. Maybe this is, yeah. To open up the right, who knows? Maybe this is a little bit more of a challenge for BYU on a run. And I kind of like that. Like, I, I don't want it to just be like, you know, you walk over them going from Baylor and Oregon to Wyoming. I, I kind of like that this is weird. It's, it could be a little bit challenging for BYU. So if BYU can rush for 150 plus, that's something that I would like to see. That would help me feel better. Yes. And 150 is not a huge number. To most, 
To most teams, 200 is the number you're sure. going for rushing. But because but at Wyoming's... BYU, yeah, you, it's not about Wyoming. At BYU, you UID, it's a hundred minimum. You got to get to 150 because you're hoping to throw for 250. Yeah, plus. so 400 plus total yards, right? Yes, throw always. for 250, always. rush for 150. Mm -hmm. Pretty good balance at BYU. Yes. I would like to see the Cougars go 150 plus against the defense that only gives up 126. And a quick start. You know this weird, like. It's a nice First game. Quarter. BYU's been so dominant at night, as we've pointed out. I mean, crazy. It's what, 21 and 1 over the last four years? That's at, unbelievable. When the game is after 6 p.m.? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> stupid. What? Right? So they've been so good. Why not a quick start against Wyoming? That, that would help me feel a little bit better. And then Wyoming's offense is only putting up just over 300 yards a game. I think 311 to be exact. So they do not. Oh, amber is the color of their energy spins. Yes. Yeah. They do not have a dynamic offense. BYU's defense really has no excuses. Wyoming doesn't score a ton of points. Nope. They don't have a dynamic offense. Nope. Golden opportunity for BYU's defense to really shut things down and send a message to Wyoming. So that's how it would qualify a dominant blowout uh, satisfying victory for BYU is give me 45 points, give me a way better run game, a quick start, and some stingy defense. Yes, there can be mistakes. Just overcome them with more great plays or creating mistakes from Wyoming's side. Andrew Peasley is a guy that we saw at Utah State. He transferred to Wyoming. He's the starter. He's got a good enough arm down the field. He is a guy that on third and six is going to run for a first. He's going he's gonna to look to go downfield. And by the way, Wyoming, I haven't really seen this they have an interesting thing where typically the helmet is going to have the, the, the gear goes all the way around the top. It, it's only the bottom. It's going to look weird hmm. when you see them walk out with those helmets. I watched like almost two games, uh, Air Force and Tulsa, and I'm like, what's up with that helmet? It's, it's a, a wild west. It's a different design. <laughs> uh, but it, Wyoming, Wyoming certainly presents a few challenges. They're not the challenge, of course, that Oregon and Baylor are. They are better than South Florida. So South Florida, remember, BYU runs for over 300 yards in this game, highlighted by the first play from Scrimmage. Dang it, why couldn't South Florida beat Florida in the swamp last week? <laughs> Moral victory would yeah. have been. The 75-yard run sets the tone. Chris Brooks has two runs of 40-plus in that game. This is an important game for Chris Brooks, and I think that he will come out and be similar to what he was against South Florida. I would love to see a 100-yard game. From Chris Brooks. Now, if Wyoming decides we're going to make BYU throw the ball, then you throw the ball and you win that way. You don't have to establish the run game. It'd just be nice, given how bad it's been the last two games, where Jaron Hall had to sort – well, against Baylor, Jaron Hall had to win this game, and Chase Roberts showed up in a massive way. Will we see a Puka Naku in this game? Please, Will we yes. see Gunnar Romney? At least a series or two, please. Be because the, the goal for those two is to get back – to beat Notre Dame. The only way that BYU gets the real bad taste out of their mouth from Oregon is to beat Notre Dame to me. I think even if BYU dominates the next two weeks, we're still going to go, well, that Oregon game was still, but we're still going to, that's going to linger. But if you, if you win the next two, which BYU is going to, and then you beat Notre Dame in Vegas, we will forget about the Oregon game because guess what? BYU is right outside the top mm. 10, if not right back in it, with only one loss at Oregon, who, hey, go Ducks. Hopefully they have a great season, and that loss looks like, well, it's hard to I win. I was there. just going to ask you that. What's your status on Oregon? Like, do you want Oregon now to win the Pac-12? 100 percent. Yes, beat Utah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, like, BYU's opponents, I am cool with all of them winning outside of the BYU game. Utah, though, eh. eh. A little bit D different. Fewer, and fewer, therein lies the special li factor of the yes, rivalry. Yes, that's the rivalry. That's what they, don't, they don't want BYU to win the rest of the year. Come on, man. Although last year was a respectable loss for Utah to lose to BYU. Ten and three it BYU. wasn't as respectable to lose to San Diego State and, what, Oregon State, I think, last year? Now, I, I do, I'm glad that you bring up, uh, like, the Oregon Ducks specifically because, yeah, as bad as that was in Eugene, like, just maybe Oregon rebounds and is a special team. And we look and say... Okay, Georgia, they're truly in another stratosphere. <laughs> yes. Oregon's a legit top 10 team. If, if it turns out the BYU loses on the road after all of a sudden done to like a top 10 Oregon team, is anybody going to be like, oh, man, that was terrible loss. Well, and it was early no. in the season. Last week I said, Spence, yeah. if BYU has to lose a game, 
That's the game to lose. I, obviously, we don't like being down 31. No, no, down 38 to seven. The like, way you lose a game still stings. But if, if Oregon is great and they win the Pac-12 and they're a top 10 team or even a top 15 team, nobody is going to say that was a bad loss by BYU. No. And, and that's, that's an the understandable loss because Oregon doesn't lose at home apparently. Yes, they haven't in a long time, right? And that's the hope. But the controllable is: Can BYU learn from that situation? Pound Wyoming and Utah State. Thursday night game next week, by the way. Short week. Let's go. Uh, a week from now, we're talking about Utah State in town. And then it's Friday off General Conference weekend. And then you're on to Notre Dame. And it's Men's Basketball Media Days in Vegas. It's a huge week, right, for a lot of programs. You, you, this is a lead up. The team has to focus, obviously, on Wyoming and Utah State. We do not. We, we can think about Notre Dame and Arkansas sitting there Third game away and fourth game away. Get right for those teams. Yes, establish the run game. Get that confidence back. Um, you know, beat up on some G5s. And then you've got the real challenge of Notre Dame and Arkansas, where if BYU can split, you're in business. You got the two and two versus the big four like we talked about. Now you got to take care of business uh, at home against some teams. you got to go win at Boy State. you got to beat Stanford on the road. Ten and two would still be uh, in the works. You can lose big and get embarrassed to Oregon and still rebound and have an incredible situation here. Just what we hope is that Oregon didn't show us that BYU is inept in these places that will bite BYU later. Hopefully the Cougars rebound in a way that shows us, no, 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 they're super legit. And like last year with two losses, BYU creeped up all the way to 14 near yeah, the end of the yeah. year. And had they taken care of business in the bowl game, would have finished top 12. Now, you bring up Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney. I'm hopeful that they play at least a few series, specifically Gunnar. Just get him on the field. Let him get, you know, at least dressed and warmed up for sure. If not in the game. Same yeah. with Puka. And then on the defensive side, Tyler Batty and Earl Tuyoti Mariner have practiced this week. That's good news. Uh, the BYU rush defense gets a shot in the arm with the reemergence of those two guys back on the defensive line after they sat out against Oregon. I don't know how much of a difference that made against Oregon. It made somewhat of a difference and to not have two experienced yeah. defensive line. When you're down, down 31, I'm not sure there's know. much. Yeah, I don't know. But getting yeah. all of those guys back, that should help. Now our